Greetings, fellow Batanians, Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to Mount and Blade 2 Bannerlord, Lords of the Forest. Episode 2, A Fresh Start. So, uh, first order of business for me now is, let's take a look. Uh, one character, I did level up on my one-handed, and I actually got two levels. So I have two more for free focus points, and I also leveled up in athletics. Uh, so, not all of the skills work as intended. But what I can tell you is between Basher and Deflect, uh, both are working. So Basher gives me, and, and this actually brings me to something that I also should explain. For skills, there are personal skills, which only help me. There's party leader skills, which help me and all of the troops in my party. There are captain skills, skills which help uh, only the troops in my formation on the battlefield. There are governor skills. Uh, what other types of skills there are? Captain, party leader, governor. Yeah, I think that about covers it. So when picking skills, all skills tend to have like a personal component and a non-personal component, a group component. Uh, so Basher, for instance, um, makes my uh, shield bashes do more damage and have longer stuns. Uh, and then the troops that I am captaining will take Less damage when in shield wall formation. And then wrapped handles. Uh, handling for one-handed weapons go up. And plus 30 one-handed skill to infantry troops in my formation. So uh, between those two, I might have you pick. What one-handed skill? Basher. Which is the... Shield stun and less damage while on shield wall or wrapped handles. Which is the weapon handling and also um, one handed skill goes up for troops in my formation. So I'll have you guys pick that for just one minute. Uh, for my free focus points, I'm going to decide to put another point into trade. And then. I am going to put a point into one-handed as well. Uh, for athletics, combat move speed and combat movement for troops in my formation. I believe, yeah, both of those skills actually work. There's a few skills that like don't work. They're bugged. And I have um, bannerlordperks.com has like a list of bugged skills. So for instance, there's some in the riding tree, some in the two-handed tree. That just, they don't work as intended, and therefore those skills may, you might want to skip out on. Um, so I'm going to have you decide the athletic skill as well. But it looks like you guys want me to go with um, wrapped handles. So let's pick that. Done. And then between the athletic skill, I'll have you pick between those two. So one is, I'm just going to call it move speed. And the other is hit points. But I'll read it to you if you want. So 3% combat movement speed. And as a captain, 5% movement speed to the troops in my formation. Or uh, well built. I gain 5 hit points. And the troops in my for the foot troops in my formation. It's important to note that not all troops are foot troops. The foot troops in my formation gain more hit points. So have you picked that too. So what I would want to do is I am not allowed to recruit anything besides Batanian troops at this point. So what I need to do is I need to get to Batanian territory pronto because I am just um, looter bait until I do. Right? Any looters with a raid party greater than like five is going to be an issue. Luckily, me alone on horseback is going to be able to ride faster than them. So I just need to make sure to avoid them at all costs. Because I could take out maybe a small group, but anything larger than a small group is gonna definitely give me some issues. The other thing I could do on my way over is to practice some of my trade skills. So it looks like you guys want move speed. Got it. And also, uh, Bad Bad Snipey, thank you for the sub. Yeah. 
You guys, wait. You picked HP, correct? Well built. Uh, I'll just wait for you to respond. I'm. I have my. Uh, if you're wondering, my my toddler has a fever, so I've been taking care of him all day long, and my brain is a little like in La La Land. Um, so there are three different types of um, points of interest in this game, for the most part. Oh, you took move speed. Okay. Uh, there are towns. Towns are like large sort of cities. The biggest thing, considering the the biggest thing, like cities in this game. Uh, you have castles. There's really not much to do at castles unless you're attacking or defending it. As castles on their own, unless you're the owner of a castle, you don't really interact with castles. And that's very true of uh, medieval times, right? Castles in medieval times were like private property, uh, owned by lords and ladies and kings and, and, and dukes and whatever. So there's nothing to do with these castles, really. Um, the towns is where a lot of the commerce and bars and arenas and all that kind of stuff happens. And then you have these little villages, and these little villages will have, like, little quests for you, and they'll have a primary production that you can buy that primary production on the cheap compared to anything anywhere else that has scarcity. Um, so while we're in this town, we can look for, like, good deals, of which I find none. A good deal would be if it had, like, a ton of a specific thing in stock that was not priced very high. Um, but what I can tell you is, yeah, there's no good deals in this town, so we're going to move on. Another nice thing to own is like a bunch of horses, but if you don't have uh, troops in your army to control the horses, uh, you get a herding penalty. So if I bought a bunch of horses right now as like a trade good, I'd be stuck herding them and it would slow down my party speed. So it's best not to do that until I actually have party members. Uh, other things to note, these blue exclamation marks are uh, quests and then yellow ones are gonna be big quests. So the blue ones are like quests being offered and the yellow ones are going to be relating to the uh, Neretzi's folly. And the Neretzi's Volley has me increasing my dinars to 2,000, growing my party to 20 men, reaching clan tier 1, which is probably the hardest of those, and then hiring a companion. Uh, what a companion is, is it's uh, another character, just like your own, where you can set up their skills, set up their equipment, tell them what to do. Um, there's also um, a few different roles that people can play. So, uh, companions can fill up caravans, trade caravans, or run caravans for you. Um, they can, um, they can also fill roles, uh, in your party. Uh, so in your party, there is going to be, um, like a quartermaster and a doctor and an engineer. So sometimes it's really nice to have party members cover those skills because otherwise you're going to have to be doing them yourself, which can be really cumbersome. Uh, when you are trying to to go to war, you know, it's really nice to uh, have other members cover the quartermaster, scout, surgeon, and engineer roles if you don't have skills in that. So because of my skills, my personal skills, because right now I'm filling up all four roles, um, I have a tiny bump to surgery, I have a tiny bump to engineering, I have a tiny bump to scouting, and that relates to my medicine, engineer, and scout abilities at like 1, 10, and 11, which is really low compared to the average people that you're going to meet. So when we're looking for people to hire in a tavern or other companions, they're going to be in taverns in the towns that we pass by. And then if you're ever looking for someone specific, you can always uh, go to the encyclopedia here and click heroes. Uh, we can say only alive people who are wanderers. Wanderers would be people eligible to become companions. We have met Manus the Boar, but this is a full list of the companions that are available to be hired right now. So like one might assume that Dallager the Smith would be a, a smith, or someone like, you know, the Silent might be good at stealth or roguery, for instance. So sometimes they have names relating, like the Surgeon is obviously gonna be someone that has medicine skill. Sometimes they're, uh, they'll are they have names related to what they do, uh, but unless we meet them, we don't know what they do. So we've met Mattis the Boar, who is honest, daring, but cruel. 
And we're looking for people that are like honest and merciful, generous and, and kind, essentially, as a requirement. But if we did hire Manus the Boar, he has, um, you know, he has these skills here that will he'll lend to our party. So none of these are necessarily party skills, uh, but just looking at him, I can also tell you that he would have been okay at being his own leader, but we'll get into that much, much later. So I am just going to be town hopping, heading towards Batanian land, uh, looking for good trade deals, because we have a bunch of trade skills. The beer here is a little pricey, so yeah, I'm going to move on. We can also try to hit up um, some of the villages as well, if they sell trade goods at discount. But we're almost actually in, whoa, forest bandits. We're almost actually in Batanian land, so very soon that will be, uh, we'll be able to hire some helping hands to keep us a protected from uh, looters and other bandits and b help to control horses and move goods so the current priority right now is to earn money and renown so money is easy enough through trade uh, renown which is the other major goal of the current quest here establishing our clan Renown is earned from defeating people uh, where the odds are stacked against you or uh, fulfilling quests. There's a bunch of different ways to uh, earn Renown. But the two ways that I intend to earn Renown so that the game is not grinding to a halt, because as someone had played before, it gets really hard to earn Renown later in game, like a lot of it, because getting the 50 Renown you need for Clan Tier 1 is easy. But getting to Clan Tier 4, which is the requirement to make your own kingdom, is quite the grind. So the reason I went with trade and one-handed is basically the same reason. If we take a look at the trade tree here, at 125 trade, you'll gain daily renown from every profiting workshop. So this is a passive renown game uh, over time, which makes grinding the renown needed to ever become king uh, less painful. Um, then also in Charm, Self Promoter will allow you to gain renown when a tournament is won. And then in the one handed tree, you have Duelist, which doubles the amount of renown gained from tournaments. So, in order to try to not have to do an obnoxious, honestly, an obnoxious amount of grind, mixing that renown that we gain passively through trade and the renown that we can gain from uh, being a capable one-handed duelist who's charming, uh, we can actually grind out the renown needed for our own kingship without too much pain. So here at uh, Remtoil, these are Batanian troops. As you can see, Batanian highborn youth and also Batanian volunteers. And what I want to do is I want to hire the cheapest troops possible. I basically want to reduce my running costs. So the highborn youth level up to what is easily considered one of the most powerful units in the game, but they're expensive. So I'm going to go with the inexpensive Batanian volunteers. And then take a look at the markets. They just have grain and some hogs. So I'm going to move on. Plague Bon. Let's see. Oh, here's some looters that want a piece of me. And I can hire more troops to dissuade the looters or just fight them. But this town sells clay at 11 gold a unit, and I will buy all of it. Now, this will encumber our party, but I intend to go up into the Batanian towns and sell the clay. Um, it, it With the clay encumbering our party, the uh, actually the looters are not even coming for us. So we're going to have to kind of like limp towards Sianon or Maranath because we are so encumbered with clay because I don't have workhorses. I don't have like mules or, or sumter horses or anything like that. Well, that's fine. So I bought this at 11 a piece. And the way you level up your, uh, your trade skill is earn money from trade. So if I sell this clay at more than 11 a piece, we can start working towards our trade XP. So if we take a look at our trade XP, it is one at a 795. So we'll just see if this is a positive trade and if it is, uh, by how much. 
Crash and I need sleeps. Thank you for the resubs and the sub. And uh, I'll catch you later, Crash, on uh, YouTube. So the clay sells here for nine apiece, so I would take it at a loss. So it's best for me to just hold on to it. The other thing I could do is my Sumter horse uh, can double as a pack mount. So if I buy a really cheap horse for myself, it increases our carry weight a little bit, which is good. There is someone with a quest here. Uh, artisans can't sell their products in Sianan. Um, this is a bit of a roguery quest, so I am not going to take it. There is no arena fights here. If there was, you would see a little um, a little helmet in the in the city's name. So instead, what we're going to do is head to Marinath and hope that they take clay. With the extra horse that we have, our carry weight has gone up a little bit, and we're able to move a little bit faster, a little bit more tolerable. So here is the king of the Batanians, Kaladog. And he has an uh, orange uh, exclamation mark over him because he has information about Neretzi's folly. Now, given that we're encumbered right now, there's just not a chance that we catch him. What I plan on doing is very passively investigating Neretzi's folly whenever there is someone that can tell me something about the folly um, around me, but I don't intend to seek out information as a primary goal. Because it's not something we need to necessarily have answered immediately. So here the clay will sell at 13 apiece, and that will uh, that will be a profit. And then if I take a look at my trade skill, as you can see, I've gained a little bit of XP from doing a profitable trade. That's kind of how trade works. Anytime I'm in a town, I really ought to check the taverns to make sure that there aren't companions that are worth hiring. Um, generally, the people on the left side up here, these are all the influential people that live in this town. So this town is governed by Kaladog himself, King of the Batanians. Town is of average wealth. And these two... These three are merchants here. So one owns, um, they all own different, uh, different, actually, no, this guy is just like the governor or mayor or whatever. This person owns a brewery and a caravan, and then this person owns a caravan, and then these two are the owner of the wine press and back streets, and he's the owner of the smithy and a clearing. So these are also gang leaders. So some of Marinath is owned by gang leaders, and some are owned by uh, legitimate business people. Now that we know that Marinath is buying clay, the thing about... Oh, well, here Caladog's running back to us, so I might as well talk Stop to him. Stop there, stranger. I bid you peace. At least until I find out who you are, anyway. I am Halligan, and who are you? I am Caladog, the High King of the Batanians and Lord of Marinath. I'm always looking for good fighters. If you ask me, if you ask about me, I suspect you'll be, uh, be told that I take good care of my men. What is the folly? Well, that's what some people call the Great Battle of Pendrat in the year 1077. Emperor Neretzi's led an army accompanied by Kuzates and Azride fight the coalition of Sturgeons, Batangians, and Valandians. It was a disaster for him. He died in it, but the victors didn't fare much better. Can you tell me anything about the battle? I'm a busy man, but there's always time to talk about the blessed battle of Pendriac. Our dear, old, beloved king, Ariel, a wonderful man, but with a heart perhaps just a mite too tender, did not wish for us to go off to war. But then he disappeared, and I, his son-in-law, ascended to the kingship. The clans cried out for war. They had a hundred years of crime against them to avenge, and I, a father to my people, gave them what they wanted. Now, the empire, uh, empire uses tricks and traps in war. No Batanian fears to meet an Imperial soldier, man to man, but we thought it would be a good laugh to use their tricks against them. So we laid an ambush on both sides of Wooded Pass, but wouldn't you know, they marched right into it. They turned and twisted as our arrows rained upon them, like fish going frantic in a pond as you draw the net tighter. Then, when they were greatly discomforted, we took our up our foxes and swords and reaped the harvest. Oh, there was some unpleasantness later with the Sturgeons about the spoils of war 
But what a grand old day it was. Thank you. So that is each person that you ask about Nerzi's folly will have different answers depending on what side they are and what role they played. Uh, so what this quest essentially has you do is learn all the different uh, players that were involved in uh, the giant battle that happened. And it's the, the summer, the 6th of summer, uh, 1084. So it really isn't too many years since that battle. So I was planning on trying to buy more trade goods. Oh, also, Remtoil Castle is under siege by the... I'm not really sure who's attacking right now, but I can check in a second. So buying iron ore at 47 apiece, I will happily... Oh, we don't have that much money. So about 15 of it. And then if we check here in the... Um, if we go to the... Oh, let's go to the encyclopedia. So we have different kingdoms. We have the Azerai, which are like the North African desert. Britannians, which is us. The Kuzate, which are the Asian steppes. Northern, and Southern, and Western Empire, which is the Fractured Empire. Sturgia, the, um, uh, the sort of Vikings. And Valandia, the Gauls, or something like that. Um... But if we take a look at Batania here, we can see the clans of Batania. So Kaladog is the leader, and I'm assuming this is Kaladog's clan. Yeah. So this is Kaladog's clan, and this, these are the other clans that have um, that are Kaladog's vassals, and these are the fiefs they own. And then they're also at war with the Western Empire. So the Western Empire is the empire that is attacking Remtoa Castle, and I'm assuming Kaladog is heading to go defend it. So I bought these at 47. I have the opportunity to sell them at 37, but I am not going to do that. Uh, I will sell one, though, because I need to make enough money to pay for wages for the troops in my employ. And what we're looking to do is just make some scratch. And maybe fulfill some quests. So here we go. Now they're selling at 59. Uh, they'll sell higher, you know, when there's scarcity. So there's a, a bit of the supply and demand chain. So selling them at a, at a profit has given us even more uh, trade XP. And I am going to look for legitimate quests to take. So we have escorting a merchant caravan, and what I will say about that is I probably don't have the men for it yet, or the equipment for myself to survive it. So I think what's probably best is I seek out quests from villages rather than towns. Towns will have a little bit harder quests to fulfill, and then also um, the vassals, like Batanian vassals will have their own quests, often to bring them... Uh, trained men or horses or things, but usually there's considerable expense with those. They're pretty expensive quests to fulfill, whereas the little towns generally have quests that are not too expensive to fulfill. So while we're here, I'm going to top up on grain because we ran out of food uh, in the last few days. And then this person has an issue called Art of the Trade. So I'll Peace talk to, to you, stranger. I'm Mangus. I own land around here. I speak for many of the people in this village. I've not heard of you, but you have the look of a man who might make something of himself one day. You have a problem? It's a good problem to have, as you know. I deal in grain. Production this year has been very good, and we no longer can make a profit on the local market. I cannot, however, put together a caravan to sell it elsewhere, so I propose a very simple deal. Use some of the goods at discount. That could work if you have the money. But if you don't, I'm willing to take a chance on you. I reckon 50 loads of grain, you can probably find a market nearby where bear, buyers will pay you a total of uh, 275. Here's my offer. I loan you the product, you sell it whatever price you like, and you bring me 275. Um, sure. Not just anyone, if you have a companion that has, okay, so I can also send a companion on that as well, but I will do it myself. So I am going to uh, buy it from him for 275 And then I can sell it however I want. 
And I've also gained a little bit of renown um, helping the local village leader. And there's also some added benefits. So my helping him um, built up a relation. So when I go to recruit troops here, um, as I have a better relation with them, I will be able to draw on more troops. So here, this is the guy I just helped out. And at relationship 10, I have a fifth troop slot to recruit. And at relationship 20, I have a sixth. So the more relation that you have with local settlements, especially local settlements that are um, linked to a castle, I'll explain that in a minute, uh, the more recruit potential you have. So there, in the game, there's like sort of two types of troops. This is a sweeping generalization. But you have troops that you can draw from town villages and troops that you can draw from castle villages. Castle villages are like noble troops and town villages are regular troops. Um, so noble troops would be the Batanian Highborn Youth, which level up to become incredibly powerful archers. And then the regular troops are the Batanian Volunteers, uh, which can level up in a whole bunch of ways. I think there's probably something like 40 different troops for each um, culture. The Highborn Youth, uh, for all their cultures, their, uh, their royal, their noble troops level up to uh, cavalry. Usually like melee armored cavalry, like knights. Uh, Batanians are the only ones that level up to archers. So they're kind of unique in that way. Um, and then your regular volunteers can level up to either become warriors, which can become um, meleeers or horsemen, or they can level up to become runners, which level up to become like wildlings or, uh, or raiders. So now we have all this grain that we need to offload, and I'm pretty encumbered. If I mouse over the grain, there's a trade rumor that uh, Marinath will buy it for 22 apiece because of my um, my basic trade skill. I have some some trade knowledge of rumors, and also Urgion here or Urgion or however you oh he went into Dunglanus, so I'm not going to be able to talk to him anymore because he's in the royal keep. And I would have to trespass. Oh, and then he pops back out, but it's too late. He's already passed me. The other thing I could try to do is to sell the grain elsewhere. So I bought it at what, 275? And I bought 50 of it. So I bought it for five and a half a piece. And I can sell it at like 13. Um, here. But what I want to do is I want to try to sell it at maximum so that we level up the trade skill. There's a rumor that... Oh, yeah. That is a pretty good price. So, we went from 750 to 1426 from that positive trade. Uh, I would love to invest in some... Um, workhorses. If I find them, I will buy them. So it looks like Sianan will buy a whole bunch of beer. So maybe we uh, we purchase some beer. This isn't the lowest price I've ever seen. But we're buying beer at 67 a piece. Actually, f more like 59 a piece. We'll pop on over to Sianan because there was a trade rumor that they are purchasing it. So here is the uh, Western Empire army attacking Remtoa Castle with Kaladog probably trying to muster a defense force so it doesn't it isn't lost to him. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that was a good, that was a good trade. There we go. Money goes up even more. And as my money goes up, my trading experience goes up. Now, once I have more money, I can invest in more expensive things and then transport it further distances for bigger uh, trade gains. But they also have mules. So when you mouse over a horse, it will show you what kind of horse it is. So the Midlands Palfrey that I'm currently riding is a regular mount. Mules are workhorses. So if I like stick a mule here, so you can see it's it's mules and saddle horses are like war horses. Um, so mules, as you can see up there, is a pack mount. And, um, 
Mounts, pack animals will add more to your carry weight than regular horses, uh, the regular animals. So I'm going to buy some mules here uh, for carry weight so that we are able to transport more goods without being crippled. Also, it looks like a hardwood is dirt cheap here at six a piece. That's pretty awesome. So I'm going to buy as much hardwood as we have money for. I don't even care about encumbrance, really. So before I actually buy more hardwood than I can carry, let's also pick up some, some uh, cheap Sunter horses uh, for extra carry weight. So what I'm aiming to do is I'm aiming to uh, try to get a bit of a... making like an impromptu informal trade caravan of sorts. So now I'm only a little encumbered. I want to leave a little bit of money to be able to pay my troops. And we just bought a whole lot of hardwood at like five a piece. So if I can find, if we can go over to like Amatanis, there's a trade rumor over at Amatanis, they will sell, uh, they will buy it for big down there. But that's a bit far. Even Maranath potentially is buying it for 34 a piece. So let's head over there. And Pope and uh, Disaster Turtle, thank you for the resubs and cheers. I'm also going to be looking for um, small combat ability or combat opportunities. Oh yeah, so here it is, for thirty-six piece. Here we go. And now I've like gained huge money because that was a huge gain per unit purchased, and my trade went up eight levels. Right on. That was a good trade. Uh, I do have a free attribute point. I'm going to let you guys choose how I spend that attribute point. So the free attribute point can be spent in Vigor, Control, Endurance, um, Cunning, Social, or Intelligence. And my current skills is three, two, three, 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 four. So control has um, lagged the most, but behind uh, all my other points. But um, whoever you think you want me to spend it is fine. Uh, the other thing is I'm going to put my free focus point in one handed because I would like to get duelist ASAP. So I want to level up um, one handed as quickly as I can. So I'm going to choose where my free focus point goes, but you can choose the attribute point. All right, looking for more trade opportunities. Fish is pretty cheap here, but not super cheap. We can try to buy more hardwood at Sianan and maybe find somewhere else to sell it. The other thing is that surrounding Sianan... Oh, Sianan has a... Um, has a, an arena. Oop, that's not what I meant to click. Oops, that's not what I meant to click either. Man, I'm bad at this. All right, let's go into the arena. They are fighting for a rough scale helmet, and I don't even own a helmet, so I would love the opportunity to get one. So I'm going to bet on myself, and it's me and a raider versus a hero and a scout with two-handed axes. Well, that's not good. Oh, there we go. My teammate went down early, leaving me two people, but then I used this tree to sort of, like, block. So it worked. All right, next is a two for two for two for two. Two-person team free-for-all, also with two-handed axes. Now, the real disadvantage I have is that I am naked, virtually, so everybody that we're fighting has way better armor than I do. So I have to use a little bit of uh, cleverness and guile. We won that round. Now it's me and a raider versus a scout and another hero, and we have bows. What I do find... Oh god, what is my do teammate doing? Is that... Helping the melee subdue the one melee and then joining 
to get the other one tends to be a really good strategy. And now it's just me and the raider that I've been teamed up with this whole time fighting for the victory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Arena champ. Give me that helmet. So I gained some renown, I gained the helmet, and I gained a lot of money from betting on myself the whole time. And this helmet looks mighty nice. It looks out of place, because everything else that I own is like complete garbage. But now we have a lot more money to spend um, to run trades. So hardwood at seven apiece here. I'll buy it all and find a good market for it. So I think Maranath might still be buying it, even though I supplied them, but if not, I can go elsewhere. And it looks like you guys want me to spend it in social. So, social it is. So what, um, what that does, I'll do that again. You see that my skill limit here is a skill focus plus social skill. So if I spend it in social, my skill limit goes up a little bit. Allow me to level up um, a faster trade. At this point, I'm really aiming for the 1 to 25 level skill, which is here. So I have plenty of room here. Now, one of the nicest things about the, um, about the trade tree is at the end, you can actually start to buy property just outright rather than have to war for it, which is huge. But trying to get that level without exploits is rather challenging. Although, with that said, there are some exploits that make it really easy to do, which I won't be using, but... Oh, yep, yeah, hardwood still sells here for a good bit. Um, it might sell better at Rote or Amatatis, but it's still, a, it's still a net profit here, so I'm going to part with it here. I'm also going to pick up one more mule. We gained uh, two more skill points in trade from that uh, positive trade. So, uh, what to do next? I could uh, run trades, run village quests. You guys can pick between the two. And I'm going to try to find ways to make money in the meantime. So there's a few places that sell clay around, but there's also some village quests too. Oh, Garios' army. Let's talk to him. Forgive me what... I'm Garios, the rightful emperor of the Caradians and lord of Zionica and Jelmaris. Can you tell me anything about the Battle of Pendriac? Yes, we will never forget that day. The day we learned that the old man who claimed that they had the right to rule us were doddering incompetence. I was with the vanguard. Neretzis apparently knew that the Patanians had planned an ambush and the Kuzate scouts had told him, but he never bothered to inform us. So up we went along the lovely wooded stream until the Patanian arrows started whooshing in from all sides. We had our shields, uh, but you could only point them in one direction at once, so we started to drop one by one until the Patanian foxmen came screaming out of the trees. Ordinarily, we'd be very vulnerable to archers, but, well... Old Neretzis hadn't thought to send any along with us. So they came upon us, chopping and slashing, and we fought until we broke. I ran too, and any man who tells you he wouldn't in those circumstances is a liar. When I was sitting in the old cold woods later that night, hiding with the other fugitives, listening to the barbarians whoop and holler as they chopped off the heads as trophies, I promised that, um, that no Calradian soldier should again be led into battle by an emperor who knows so little of war. Well, thank you. So here, again, you can uh, see the different, the differences of, um, of the experience depending on the leaders that you talk to. Wow, that dude has so many. So he's moving really slow right now, and you're probably like, why? He, uh, he has 196 able-bodied people, 325 wounded, and 346 prisoners. That's why he's trucking along at snail's pace. All right, there is clay here at 19 apiece. That's actually not that cheap. So let's move on. And you guys want me to run trades. Okay.
We're going to run some profitable trades here. We've got hogs. 54 piece? Thank you for tuning in to Mount and Blade 2 Bannerlord Lords of the Forest, which originally streamed live on Twitch February 27th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you would like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you would like to join my online gaming community on Discord, Rodamont.com has a link to it, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. I hope to catch you next episode or upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow Batanians.